In this tutorial, I will show you how to control an LED with your Raspberry Pi board. We will first make the circuit together step by step and then write the code on Raspberry Pi operating system so we can control the LED. And let's start with the circuit. So first of all, make sure you have correctly shut down your Raspberry Pi and now you can power it off. Okay, so that's the first thing to do. Power off your Raspberry Pi. Don't do anything with the GPIOs while the Raspberry Pi is powered on. Then for uh, the circuit, I'm going to also remove the SD card. Okay, because the SD card is a bit here on the side. So you have the risk of breaking it on the table uh, when you manipulate the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to put that on the side. Now you take your breadboard and you're going to add your LED. Okay, so the LED, as you can see, has two legs and one of them here on the left is longer than the other one. Okay, so you're going to take the actually the shorter leg, okay, the shorter leg and connect that to the ground. And we're going to say that the ground is the minus line here, the minus line on the breadboard. I connect this on the ground and the longer leg is going to be connected on another line here, as you can see, of the breadboard. You take a resistor, which is here a one kilo ohm resistor. So basically, I would suggest to go from 330 ohm to one kilo ohm resistor. So you plug one leg of the resistor here to the LED and the other leg to another row here of the breadboard, right? And then what you're going to do is take the black. So if you can have a black wire, that's better. That's the convention for ground. So you plug the male part into the breadboard here on the minus line. And then the female part on the Raspberry Pi. So you're going to put uh, this on a ground pin. And a ground pin, we're going to go on the uh, second row, on the bottom row here from the left, and count one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, this is a ground pin. All right. And from the other side of the circuit, so from the resistor here, you're going to connect this leg of the resistor to GPIO number 17, which is actually the sixth GPIO from the bottom left. So that's the one just after the ground here. Okay, as you can see on the bottom row. All right, so you can see the circuit here, okay? You can see the circuit is closed from the ground here to the shorter leg of the LED and then longer leg of the LED with the one kilo ohm resistor, which goes to GPIO number 17. So what you can do now is put back the um, SD card like this and power on your Raspberry Pi. Okay, and after you have powered on your Raspberry Pi, now you can get to your uh, Raspberry Pi operating system or whatever operating system you have installed. And now we are going to write the code to power on the LED. So basically you can use any text editor or any IDE, but if you are using Raspberry Pi operating system, I'm gonna do the tutorial here with Thony Python IDE. So I have a new program here. You can just go under File and New if you don't have a new program, okay? I'll do Control N and I'm going to write the code here. So first of all, we are going to do import rpi.gpio. So we're going to import that library. So rp uppercase i lowercase dot gpio all uppercase as GPIO. Okay, this is a quite common convention when you use that library here to use just as GPIO so it's easier to write this in the code than all of that. Then what I'm going to do is do GPIO.setMode with GPIO.bcm. So this basically what it's going to do, it's going to allow you to use the GPIO number and not the Raspberry Pi pin number. Okay, so the GPIO number is usually a better choice. And then to power on the LED, we first need to set the GPIO, which corresponds to the LED, as output mode. So we are going to do this GPIO.setup with the GPIO number. So this is 17. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do 
I'm going to create a global variable here, LED pin is equal to 17. So we can just use LED pin instead, which is going to make the code more readable and more scalable. And we are going to do gpio.out and close the parentheses. So this is going to set the uh, GPIO 17 here. We can use 17 because of GPIO BCM. It's going to set the GPIO 17 to output mode. So then we can control the LED. And after that, if we want to power on the LED, we can do GPIO.output with the uh, GPIO number. So LED pin and GPIO.high. So you can use GPIO high or GPIO low to power off or to power on the LED. Then we are going to do uh, a slip. So I'm going to import time and we are going to do time.slip for one second. And at the end of the program, I am going to do GPIO.cleanup. So this is something that you should always do as a best practice when you use the RPI.gpio is to do GPIO.cleanup at the end of the program, just before the program exits. Okay, because when you set, for example, some pins as, or some GPIOs as output mode, and if you forget to clean up, the GPIOs are still going to be in output mode. And then, for example, if you try to read from them in another program, you may create a short circuit and destroy some GPIOs. So as a best practice, always finish your programs with GPIO.cleanup. Okay, I'm going to save the file. So file... Um, save and I'm going to go in uh, tutorials here folder and named LED so LED.py I save the file and now I can run the program by clicking here on the play button okay and you can see the LED was powered on for one second and then powered off when the program exits now let's do something a little bit more interesting, which is to make the LED blink indefinitely until we tell it to stop. So I'm going to start from that program, okay? Most of the program is already still valid. So we still have the LED pin, we have the import lines, we set the mode as a BCM to use the GPIO numbers. We also set up the LED pin as a output, okay? And now what I'm going to do is a loop which is an infinite loop. So while true, I'm going to add an indentation here. Okay. I'm going to power on the LED and then wait for one second. And then I'm going to do GPIO. So still in the indentation of the while dot output LED pin GPIO low. So power on slip for one second. So it's still going to be power on. Power of the LED, time slip with one. So basically this is going to make the LED blink every one second. And at the end of the program, we still do GPIO.cleanup. But here we need to improve this a little bit because what is the problem? The problem is that we are going to enter the while loop here, the infinite one. And when we kill the program with control C, for example, this is gonna directly uh, and the program. This is going to directly exit the program and we won't execute gpio.cleanup. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this while loop inside a try catch structure. So try, I select all of this, I press tab okay, in order to add one indentation and then I go back to the same indentation as try and I do accept keyboard interrupt. Okay, you can see it should turn on a different color with a colon and what I do is I put the gpio.cleanup here inside the except. So basically here we're gonna uh, enter the while loop without any uh, problem. We're gonna make the LED blink as long as it can and when we actually press Control c on the terminal to kill the program we are not gonna exit directly. We are going to get here because we have an exception which is a keyboard interrupt and we are going to enter this block of code to do gpio.cleanup. So I can save the program with control S and actually well if you want to use control C you can't just uh, click 
on that it's not gonna work so what you can do is you can run directly from a here from the shell or you can also open a terminal i'm just going to open terminal here okay and let's go to where you have saved the program okay this is the led.py and i'm going to run with python 3 led.py and i press enter and you can see the led is now blinking every second now i press ctrl c and you can see the led stops blinking and the program exits and also thanks to the gpio.cleanup every pin has been cleaned so here only just the pin uh, the gpio number 17 but it means that you can run this program again and again and again and you won't have any problem if you liked this video subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future also check out my online courses so you can learn raspberry pi step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point links in the description all right thank you for watching see you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses